In this section, I'll introduce several of the key AJAX technologies, terms, and acronyms that you might hear or run across as you're integrating AJAX into your web forms applications. So we'll start off by talking about some of the terms, clarifying acronyms, and then I'll jump into a more formal discussion of what AJAX offers us as developers. So to get started, let's talk about traditional web applications and what they offer. Normally, if you go fill out a form and you click a button, the data from that form is posted back to the server, and we call that a postback operation. That data is then processed, and then either the same page or a different page is reloaded in the browser. So the entire page is refreshed as we submit our data. Well, with AJAX, it's kind of opposite. We don't want to refresh the entire page. And so we want to do something called a partial page update. And that's where we only update maybe a section or a part of the overall page as they click a button, click on a hyperlink, or integrate with a menu. So partial page updates are designed to allow us to get the data we need into the application and display it to the user, but not have to reload the entire page like traditional apps have done back in the past, and still do today, quite honestly. Now this is all made possible using this AJAX technology, Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. AJAX is simply an acronym. Really AJAX is just a bunch of things behind the scenes at work to make exchanging data and updating parts of a page possible. Some of those technologies that could be involved include XML, extensible markup language. That's a way we can exchange data and mark it up using tags. You can also use JSON. JavaScript object notation. Now this is what's more commonly used. Although we call it AJAX, it really should be called AJAJ or something because it's really asynchronous JavaScript and JSON because that's what all the browsers understand. And JSON, like XML, is a way to exchange data between a server and a browser very easily and mark up the data. The DOM represents the memory that we interact with when we're using AJAX. So when we get back, for instance, a, an XML or a JSON message, we want to take that data and update the page. Well, that means we need to update the document object model. The document object model gets created as a page loads, and you can think of it kind of like a hierarchical chart or a genealogical chart where you'll have nodes that are parents, they have children, and they have children, and so on and so forth. Finally, another term you might come across is something called REST, Representational State Transfer. Now REST is simply a way to identify resources on a server, and we typically identify them using URLs, and then retrieve data from the server back to the client, and that would be typically JSON data in the case of AJAX. So REST is something that you don't have to use, but it's very popular in the world of AJAX. But another option is web services. So REST is one option for identifying and getting data. Web services are another option. And both can serve up JSON data or XML data. So what exactly is AJAX? Well, I've already said it's just an acronym. But when you put several technologies together, we get this AJAX functionality. The technologies are all relying upon one key object that's built into all modern browsers called the XML HTTP request object. Now this object allows us to make what's called asynchronous calls to and from the browser and back to the server and we can go back and forth that way. The object initiates a request to the server and then receives data back but the difference is we don't have to reload the entire page for this to happen. In fact we can just load XML or JSON data and so the actual payload, the data that's being sent back and forth, is minimized. Now with ASP.NET AJAX, we're actually going to be sending back some data plus some HTML, as I'll show you coming up. But understand that we can use this object to send whatever we'd like. It's not limited to just XML or JSON. We can even send HTML data if we'd like. Now the other technologies that play a big role are the DOM that I've mentioned, the document object model. Of course, JavaScript is needed to trigger the request to the server and to get the data back and work with it. And then CSS is even a big player in this. As far as data formats, I just mentioned JSON, XML, or HTML. You can even send clear text if you'd like. Now, these calls are made asynchronously. And what that means is, rather than locking up the browser when a call is made to the server, what will happen instead is a separate background process will make the call. That way, the user can still interact with other controls on the page and not feel like it's locked up. And that's a big deal. 
Messages are sent back and forth using the XML HTTP request. We eliminate page refreshes, and that's our partial page update term that I mentioned earlier. And we can integrate pretty much with any HTTP technology out there. So whether it's web services, web pages, REST APIs, or some other technology that serves up data, it would be fair game as long as it's able to handle HTTP requests and responses. As mentioned, this works with all the mainstream browsers, so it's really, really easy to get this going and added into your pages. And you're going to see in the next section here that you don't even have to be a JavaScript master to get started with Ajax. So let's take a look now at what are the different players in ASP.NET Ajax that we can use to minimize the amount of code we have to write.